<laughs> in this video, we're going to be looking at the initial setup of the Mamotion Luba mower, specifically setting up the RTK satellite and radio antenna. Okay, it's been a few weeks since I received my Kickstarter Mamotion mower. And if you haven't checked out my unboxing video of this when we first got it, definitely uh, check that video out. Since unboxing it, we've had some typical Pennsylvania spring weather, so uh, it's really been tough to uh, get a chance between the rain and the cold to start to get out there. But the weather's finally clearing, and this video I wanted to sp specifically focus on finding a place for the RTK, uh, showing you the options for it, and then seeing what's gonna work for my particular situation. Just to clarify, I do not have any affiliation with my motion. They are not paying me at all. I <clears throat> signed up for the original Kickstarter uh, to get this mower. So all of these opinions are gonna be based on exactly what I think. I have no reason to give anything but my honest opinion of how this mower is doing so far. They did provide me with an affiliate link However, if you would like to support my channel and are looking to buy it, you can click through that and I will get a percentage of your, of your purchase. But it has no effect on my review or my experience with how this is going to go. Just to start, as far as assembly of the mower itself goes, it comes, I would say, 99% assembled. The only thing that you need to snap on is the front bumper and it clicks in very easily. The bumper has two clips here spring-loaded and you just want to make sure that the LED light is facing up because that's the top of it and it's going to clip right into the front of the mower and it also has some communication inputs there as well. It's a little firm to get it to actually snap in but as long as you can't pull it back out once you're in then you're good to go. Okay, and now that that's in, I'm gonna take this off the table because my main focus here is actually gonna be finding a place for this. So one of the biggest benefits obviously to this mower is that you don't need to take the time to install a perimeter wire around your yard to tell the mower where to go. What we need to do is figure out an appropriate place for this. This is your RTK, the top of this needs to have a clear view of the sky to, to communicate with the satellites. And then this radio antenna here, which comes disassembled but just screws on, is what's gonna communicate with your lawnmower. And from what I understand, the lawnmower itself also communicates uh, directly with the satellites when it does have a clear view. <clears throat> so finding a place to mount this that gets good communication from the satellites and can talk with the mower is what's the most important. Once we figure that out, our installation should be as simple as walking the mower around the yard, showing it where to cut, and basically how to get back and forth from the charging station. So we're gonna focus just on charging station and RTK here. I'm gonna show you the two options for mounting this, and I'm gonna go outside and see what's gonna work at my house, because we do have a couple of uh, obstacles to avoid. All right, first is the charging station. Very similar to any other auto mower you may have seen. We have the Husqvarna one. It looks almost identical. On the back of the station here, there are two ports. <clears throat> one port is gonna be for your power, and this unit comes with a 10 meter which is about a 30 foot, 32 foot extension cord. I'm gonna route that up through the bottom of the base into the back of the charging station. So we have about 30 feet, we can plug it in. And then the power adapter right there. So that is gonna be the situation for all options. Obviously this needs power. Here's where you have two options. They give you the option one, of mounting the RTK on a pole directly attached to the charging station. If you have your charging station in a place that has a clear view of the sky and a clear view of your lawn, I'm sure this is gonna work. I'll show you how this is set up right now. 
All right, here's our charging station. If we're doing it with all one unit, we have one single wire powering the whole thing. They give us some spikes to drive in to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. And then you go ahead and assemble the clamp here. You just had to put these four bolts in on the RTK. And we have a pole here. Pole here with a giant spike. In the ground. Okay, so this is essentially what it would look like here. I didn't drive the stake all the way in. I also didn't route this wire. This wire would actually route down through a hole in the base plate underneath so it's all nice and neat out of the way. But this isn't the setup I'm going for because it's not gonna work. So I just wanted to show you the gist of it. Here we are. That right there is the all-in-one solution. One power cord. One power cord for the charging station and the antenna. And our mower goes in. We got a green light right on the station here. Okay. We can go ahead and power this on. We'll just hold it down for a couple seconds. Lights flashing, and we'll go and check the signal with this setup here. Okay, at this point here, we have a green light on the RTK saying that that's on and powered, same with the charging station. I pull up the app, and it's gonna allow me to create my mowing area. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and check the positioning. Okay, once we open the app, we're going to click on the POS up here, which is our positioning data. And it gives us a bunch of numbers. It gives us the battery percentage, the Bluetooth quality, which is just how far we are away with our phone. The three things we wanna pay attention to are the number of satellites, uh, the positioning status, and the age of differential. These three things are gonna be important later when I'm testing out the location of my mower in relation to the RTK. So in general, what they suggest is uh, both of the numbers for number of satellites need to be above 20. Your positioning status needs to be four. And the age of differential needs to be between zero and 20. And that is just a number of uh, the time delay between your mower and the RTK. So right now, in this scenario, all these numbers are good. Let's go ahead and drive this thing. First thing I was surprised about was actually how fast it was able to move. And you can control in the app the speed limit. It basically has like a governor on it. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit here and see how quick we can move. I mean, those wheels are spinning good. I don't know how fast it's gonna cut, but for mapping out your boundary. Uh, it's definitely moving quick. The app control is very simple. The one side, the left side controls front to back and the right side controls left to right. Let's see, we have an option here for return to charging station. Let's see if this works. All right, and that's a setup that uh, would definitely work for some people, um, just not gonna work on our house here. So let's try option two. Okay, definitely the most, or the simplest solution there is to use their pole and their base mount 
RTK. But if you have a situation like mine where I don't think I'm going to be able to mount it near the charging station, then we're also provided with a separate extension cable for the RTK and a separate power supply. So when the RTK is mounted to the charging station, it derives its power from the same power supply as the charging station. If we want to remotely mount this somewhere else that's more convenient, we have that option by having a second power supply. That's what I'm going to have to do here. If we take a look at my situation with our house, the trees, and the front yard, you're going to see uh, I don't think the charging station mount is going to work. I think I'm going to need to mount this somewhere separately on the house. And what I'm going to do is test out some temporary locations before I actually mount it. And we're going to walk around the yard and see what kind of signal we're getting from the satellites. And also, we should be able to see the signal from the RTK to the robot mower itself. <clears throat> this extension cable is also 10 meters, so you get about 30 feet to the new power supply. And again, that could be mounted anywhere. It doesn't need to be connected to your charging station. The front yard's very clear. My issue on this house is the house is very protected by a lot of big trees. So I'm thinking maybe one of these three chimneys up there would give me a clear view to the sky and still enough of a signal to the mower. But I want to try to figure out a temporary way to try it first before I really commit to getting up there and strapping something to the chimney. All right, here's my thought from okay. Yo! from one of the roofs. I think the chimneys would be best, but again, before I commit to that, I'm going to try strapping it to this satellite dish here on a pole and just, just to get an idea of what kind of signals I'm getting and see if it's even going to be worth it. Definitely a temporary situation up there with that RTK. I just want to make sure whether it's even a viable option. Uh, if it is, I think I can get in a much better position by going up on top of that chimney. Now for the charging station, I tried it first over by the house and it was kind of blocked from the RTK. And when you open up the app here, uh, the mower does a self check looking for satellite signal, charging station, RTK, all that kind of stuff. And I was getting a, an error code on the RTK. So I moved over here where I have a little bit better line of sight to the RTK uh, up on my house and I got good signal. So at this point, not the ideal situation. I'm not gonna leave this charging station here, but at least I wanna make sure that these are again, viable options. I think my next step here is gonna be to make a small boundary area, see how far and make, make sure I can get out. It's about, 200 to 250 feet from here to the far end of my lawn. So I want to make sure that I can get out that far uh, and out to that corner without it being an issue. Okay, you can see my five-year-old had no problem uh, controlling the mower, heading all the way out the front yard, turning it around, bringing it back. Um, and while he was doing that, uh, I was checking on the signals it was getting and just making sure that there wasn't gonna be an issue anywhere in my yard. I know that the charging station's in a good spot um, and I'm checking these numbers here. So my satellites are good, they're both above 20. Positioning status is four and that Asian differential is, is between 0 and 20. So everything looks good. Um, that positioning status was really the one 
when I was having an issue with the charging station, it would either show uh, a two or a five, and that's where it's not gonna be communicating. So you just need that to be showing a four, and your communication should be good. This is that spot here. I have it, which I kind of have a line of, line of sight up to the RTK. Um, there's some trees in the way here of the sky. I don't know how it's gonna work when these fill in. Uh, but it was working here with the one exception being I actually had my tractor parked right in front of it and I kept getting an error signal. I would send it to Mo and it would actually leave the charging station and then stop and basically just get um, just get frozen. So I don't know if it was the amount of metal in that or not. Um, really at this point uh, all my trial and error here. I don't have a lot of good reasons for why one spot works and one doesn't yet, um, but at least uh, it gives you some idea. All right, well, I just did a pretty big sample area uh, plan set for, our, for my first mow section. Um, I connected a channel from that to the charging station. I'm gonna set it to mow and we're gonna see how it goes here. I mean, definitely learning a lot already about placement of uh, the antennas and the charging station and all that kind of stuff. Um, also learning about setting up uh, mowing areas, channels, which are ways that the um, mower gets from the charging station to the different mowing area, uh, no-go zones, all that kind of stuff. So once I learn a little bit more about that and experiment here, again, look for the third video uh, in this series where I'll outline all the options that I uh, figured out for that. And as always, we'll be updating with uh, how well it's working and any problems I run into. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button to stay up to date on all my new videos in the world of property management, renovation, Airbnbs, real estate investing in general, and pretty much any other project I get myself into. Thanks again. Appreciate the support. Don't forget to leave a comment below.